All right, we're just going to look at a very quick couple of tips here for helping you debug and correct your HTML, CSS, or JavaScript for those who are just starting out. I get a lot of questions often on something that's gone wrong with your HTML or CSS or your website's not looking how it's supposed to. And oftentimes it's just because you're missing a semicolon or a bracket or something. And so I'm going to show you a couple of quick tips to make sure that you don't spend hours and hours searching for those things. Now, first, we're going to be looking at these inside of the Visual Studio Code app. So the VS Code app, you'll want to make sure you have that downloaded and added. And the first one we're going to be looking at is what we call a formatter. Now, here I'm just looking at this basic little HTML document. It's got a couple of issues with it. But the first thing I'm going to show you is how to format the document. Now, you can see that I've got some divs and I've got some parent and children, but all of the nesting order and the tabbing order isn't quite correct. So we can actually fix this automatically for us. So in VS Code, we can do the uh, command K. You can actually go up here to the menu here. Let me show you this. So you can go up here to the uh, view, and then we're going to go into the command palette. So that's the command palette here. And you're just going to type in the word format, and it's going to come up with this format document. So if you just click the format document, you can see automatically all of my HTML is auto-reformatted, and everything now is indented properly. All the parent and children and all the nesting order is corrected. So that's something you'll want to keep in your bag of tricks to just to format a document really quickly. The next thing we're going to look at here is what is known as a linter, L-I-N-T-E-R. And there are linters for JavaScript. There's linters for HTML, CSS, PHP, Java, you know, your favorite programming language. It's definitely something you want to install as you begin uh, your journey in the web. Now, I've got a little plug-in here for beginners that's quite helpful. So I'm going to show you how to install those. You come over here to the extension marketplace, and you're going to search for this extension right here. It's called HTML Hint. Okay, So you can see right here, it's the HTML Hint plugin. And you're just going to go ahead and click Install. And that will install the HTML Hint plugin. You can read kind of how to use it right here with some of the uh, parameters that you can customize if you want. Once you've got the HTML Hint plugin installed, I'm going to show you how that works. Now, there's a couple of problems here with my HTML. And it's oftentimes a little bit tricky to see. Now, if you look over here in the right-hand sidebar, I know it's a little bit hard to see on my screen, but see how there's a little yellow bar right here, and there's a little yellow bar right here, and up here there's a little yellow bar, and up here there's a little, little yellow bar? That is telling me that there are warnings in this certain section of code. So up at the top of my code, if I come up here, notice that on line one, there's a little yellow bar over here. That tells me that something is possibly wrong on line one. And you can see that the word HTML has this yellow underline. Okay, that's a warning. Down here, there's another yellow underline. Over here, there's a red word. Red usually means that's an error on that line or something's gone wrong there. Okay, so if you look over here in the sidebar, you can often spot these and help. Now, an easier method is to come down here to the bottom left and you'll see there's a little, this is kind of hard to see, but way down at the bottom left, it says four and five. So if I click that little thing, this is the warning dialog. So if I click it, it's going to pop up my little terminal here. And if I'm on the problems tab, it will show me those warnings in a verbose manner. So for example, you can see on line number one on my HTML, it says doc type must be declared first. So if I click that, it takes me up to that warning. And sure enough, the first line of an HTML document should be a doc type, right? So you can click view problem and it's going to show you what happens here. So in order to fix this issue, I need to add in a doc type. Let's look at the next one. So we're going to come down here, click on this one. It'll highlight it. It says the rel attribute must be in double quotes. So here I've used double quotes here and then here I've used single quotes. Okay, whoops. So that's an easy fix. We can just put that in double quotes. And oftentimes I'll hear all the time from people, students, other people, that they say, well, it still works. Well, it's, it doesn't matter if it still works. If I leave this in single quotes, it will actually still work in the browser. But you need to fix the error, right? Getting into the habit of having things still work, even though they're incorrect, is a very, very bad habit. So always make sure they're correct. Uh, let's go down to the next one. So special characters must be escaped. So let's click down to this one. So this is kind of a funny error, special characters. I'm not really using special characters here. But this is right here is actually showing us the error. 
So it says the tag must be paired. And sure enough, there's an error here where I'm missing some tag pairings. Now often these are a little bit tricky to spot, but you can see I've got an anchor tag that's opened here. I've got an anchor tag that's closed here. Notice this closing anchor is missing its tag pairing. I'm missing a bracket. So if I put in that bracket, notice it fixed both of those errors. It turns out I didn't have a special character, but the HTML, the linter, didn't quite know what to do because I was missing this closing bracket, but it did note that there was an error on that line. So fixing that gets rid of all my errors. I've still just got the doc type, of course, I would go add the doc type to fix that. So really easily like that, it makes it so much easier to debug your code and not pull your hair out hours and hours wondering why your HTML, your CSS isn't working correctly because of those errors. Now you can see over here in my sidebar, all those little yellow bars are gone. The only thing that still ha I have up here is my doc type. Now the same thing works with CSS. So I'm gonna switch over here to my CSS sheet. And uh, typically what you want to do is you want to first fix your errors, then second, format the document. And the reason why you wanna do it in that order is if you try to format the document with errors in place, oftentimes the formatting won't work because of missing brackets or missing you know, closing tags and things like that. So right over here, you can see I've got the CSS sheet and this one's tabbed properly. This little rule down here is not tabbed properly. All my you know, properties and values are left aligned and all that sort of jazz. So we want to format this document. So the same thing, I can go up here to my command palette. And so we're gonna come in here and view the command palette and it's the same, same thing as format document. So I'm just gonna select the format document and automatically you can see the linter went ahead and reformatted all of my uh, code in the proper format, okay? So everything is formatted. Now I'm gonna undo that because what I'm gonna do first is fix the errors. So you can see same thing over here in the sidebar. I've got a red bar here. I've got some yellow bars. That's claiming there's errors and warnings. So if I come down here and click on my first one in my problems panel, it's gonna jump me down here. And it says, hey, there's a CSS curly brace that was expected. So these are the curly braces, right? That one right there. So it's saying something is goofy here. You can see the little red underlines. So I've gotta fix that. And sure enough, on my username selector right here, I forgot my opening curly brace. So just by adding that opening curly brace, you can see all those little red lines go away. I fixed that problem, perfect. Now that actually got rid of most of my errors. There's one more here. It looks like this one right here. It says, do not use an empty rule. There's no point in having a CSS rule if it doesn't have any declarations, right? So I would just need to remove this. So I can go ahead and delete that. Perfect, now all of my CSS errors are completely fixed. There's no red lines or yellow lines. Now I can go ahead and format the document. So I can come up here, go to my command palette and format my document. Now everything is properly indented and I'm good to go. Okay, two more tips and then we'll be done with this video here. So the next tip is what I call line wrapping. Now I think by default VS Code has line wrapping turned off I like to have it turned on by default. And uh, line wrapping is this issue here where we have the background and you can see that this wraps, it's a really, really long rule, so it's wrapping lines. If I increase the width here, of course, you can see this is what line wrapping means, right? As long as there's enough space, it'll be on one line, but if there's not enough space, it wraps down here to another line. Now you can turn this off and on with a keyboard shortcut really easy. It's option Z. So the option or alt key on a PC, alt Z, so Alt, that turns line wrapping off. Now you can see that that line goes clear over there. And by hitting, I'm gonna bring this back a little bit, Alt Z one more time, that turns it on. So you can toggle between that really easy on and off, on and off uh, with Alt Z. So that's off and that's on. And this is really helpful when you're working with HTML and things like that. You can see here that it goes way past the document. Alt Z will help you see all the code there to make sure nothing's incorrect. Then you can always Alt Z back to get it to turn off and on. Now again, I like the opposite of the default. So to change the default, you can just come into your VS Code preferences. So come into code, go to preferences, and then go over to settings, and you can just search for line wrap. And you can see right here, word wrap is what they call it. Controls how line should wrap. I have mine on by default. You can set that to whatever you want. Okay, next tip here before we do our final tip is uh, just font size. I see lots of times people working with teeny, teeny, tiny fonts There are small screens and they're squinting. Make sure you have your font size sufficiently large to where you don't have to have any eye strain. And it's a lot easier to spot problems and, and bugs as well. So come up here and you can go to the preferences, same thing. Go over to your settings. 
you can just come here to the, uh, you can, I think it's just under font. You can search for font size or something like that. There we go, font size. So I have mine set to 36. Obviously mine's much larger than typical because I want you to be able to see it on a video tutorial, but set that to something that's comfortable for you so you don't have to squint. Um, and then notice when you click on an element, VS Code automatically highlights the matching tag here for you. So the upper and lower tag, that's kind of a nice little feature. Um, I have another plugin that's actually highlighting the, the tag close and start that's doing that. I think it's called a matching tags plugin. You can install that one if you want. And then the last plugin is something I get asked often in my video tutorials, and that's how do you automatically preview your code over here in the browser without having to save and refresh and switch around and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this file. So I've got my index.html file. I'm going to right click the file here, and this is the magic plugin. You can see it's called open with live server. So I'm going to open this over here in my document with live server, and I'll just zoom in here a click or two so you can see this easier. And so this is a live preview. I'm using Firefox as my browser here on the right of my VS code. So if I come over here and change this instead of user login, I'm going to call it user sign up. As soon as I hit command S to save over here in VS code. So watch, I'm going to hit command S. Notice how my browser refreshed itself and automatically updated. I didn't have to move back and forth. And there's a plugin that's doing that. And the same thing works for CSS. So if I'm in my CSS sheet, and I make some uh, change over here. Let's make something obvious like the background color. I'll change this to blue and I'll hit save and boom, my, my code is automatically updated over there. This is really, really helpful for developing, especially for beginners because it helps you spot errors early on. If you're working with your, you know, your code, everything's looking fine and you mess something up, you can stop what you're doing and undo immediately. Command Z, save and refix the issue, right? So you don't have to kind of write a lot of code and then everything breaks. I always recommend, you know, do one thing at a time, write a little bit of code, save and refresh, little code, save and refresh to make sure that if you encounter an error, you can easily correct it uh, while you're coding. So that plugin is over here in the extensions library. You're gonna look for the one called live, whoops, server. So you find the live server plugin, you install this live server plugin, and then the way it works is once you have this plugin installed, you come over here to your files panel. It works with HTML files by default. You can configure it to work with server files, PHP files, and things like that as well, dynamic files or JavaScript. But by default, it's HTML. So you find your HTML file, you right click it, and you say open with live server. And then once it's open up, opened up with live server, it'll automatically you know, start working. You just simply code and save, and it automatically uh, updates here on the right, and then you're good to go. So that was just a couple of quick tips for helping those starting out to uh, save some time, hopefully, uh, by debugging your HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. All right, that's it for the day. Hope you liked it, and we'll see you in the next one.